Oh, from Go-Kart, it's Angst Patel. I believe that we all like to make money, right? Who here likes to make money? By a show of hands. Thank you. Shout out your name. In the third row? Siobhan. Siobhan. Thank you for getting involved. I believe those in life that stand up get rewarded. So Siobhan, we've got an Apple Watch to give to you. Come and meet us in the break. We've all got a blue T-shirt and we've got an Apple Watch to give to you. In the next 20 minutes, I hope to show you all the way in which we can all stand up and make more money. Now, we all know one of the ways to make more money is by driving efficiency and making less mistakes, right? Here at GoCart, we work in food service. You see, in food service, a chef only truly knows what he or she needs for the next day at the end of service. It's one o'clock in the morning, and this chef is exhausted. He picks up the phone to call his supplier, and oh, he hits the answer phone. Guys, remember, it's one o'clock in the morning. Hello, mate, it's me. I need some tomatoes, please. Bye, and he hangs up and goes off to bed. Fast forward three hours later, and this food supplier comes into work. He's faced with 100 of these answer phone messages, and then he hits this one. Hello, mate, it's me. Who? I need some tomatoes, please. What tomatoes did he need? He's got zero chance of getting the things he actually wanted. Now, I'm going to play to you an actual order from one of our food suppliers, and I want you all to listen out and try and get the things that he wanted. You guys ready? Yeah? Hello. I have uh, one order, one Gallia melon, one cantaloupe melon, one lemon, spinach melon, two kiwi tree, one cucumbers for extra aubergine, large maybe, for each watermelon. This is uh, ready. That was tough. Did anyone get any of that? Anything? <laughs> yeah, right, it's difficult, right? Now, we've listened to this voicemail order quite a few times now. We're pretty sure this guy has not actually told us who he is. He had no chance, this poor guy, of getting the things that he wanted. Now, the irony of food service is, it's like ordering a Chinese, because you're never quite certain of what you're going to receive. It's hugely inefficient. <laughs> hugely inefficient, and mistakes are a daily occurrence. So, let's take a look at some other industries and how they drive efficiency. Who here bought their train ticket to come here today online? Show of hands? Yeah. Who here's booked a holiday online? Okay, most of you. Who here's got a smartphone with at least 10 apps on your phone? Now, who here's got a wholesaler app on their phone? Now, who here knows of more than 10 wholesaler apps? Right. As we'll hear later today, there's some great wholesalers like JJ Foods who lead with technology. But in this vast pool of 14,000 food suppliers, it's only a tiny fraction. Now, technology's great. The greatest inventions of mankind, the plane and the car, they've not only showed us how smart humans are, but also how humans crave an easier life that allows them to do more things quickly. But technology has its effects. 9,000 bank branches have shut in the UK due to the rise of online banking, but it's made our lives easier. The rise of ASOS and Boohoo.com, they've been factors in shutting 264 department stores in the UK. Even Marks and Spencers, they're going to shut 30 this year in great places like Portsmouth. And slough. <laughs> but we read about this every single day. It's the demise of the high street, the retail apocalypse. That's all right. This is a wholesale conference. That's retail, right? You see, guys, we can no longer look at our industry in parts, the retailers, the wholesalers, and then the brands. Because if one of us is in trouble, we're all in trouble. You see, what we are, in fact, is a supply chain, the independent supply chain. Because everyone in this room, we've all got one common goal to get your food and put it into people's mouths. Moving food along the chain, making a little bit of money along the way. So we need to start thinking of ourselves as a supply chain. Because guys, we're not alone in thinking like this. Take a look at the Tesco Booker deal. Well, Tesco, they used to say they were in the grocery business. Now that makes complete sense, right? They've got supermarkets, they're a grocer. They're in the grocery business. But today they say they're in the food business. Wait a minute, the food business? Hang on, they, they don't grow the food, do they? They're not cooking the food. In fact, they move it. Dave Lewis, the CEO of Tesco, one of the greatest in our country, in my own opinion, his language reflects this. The Tesco Booker deal is going to give us more click and collect locations. Both Tesco and Booker have food and consumer at its core. The Tesco Booker deal is going to open up new ways in which we can serve Britain's food, whether in the home or out the home. The Tesco Booker deal is going to save us £61 million alone in logistics. Today, logistics is now the name of the game. Because, guys, it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you're not making it or consuming it, 
you're moving it. Big multi-billion dollar businesses are now competing on logistics. We've got Uber, Uber Eats, Deliveroo, Just Eat, and Amazon. What Amazon have done is struck the match and lit the fire underneath the big four. We've seen it with the recent acquisition of Whole Foods and how, that's, how we're all reeling, you know, what does it mean? Today, the big four supermarkets all offer home deliveries. You've got Tesco, as the Sainsbury, even Marks and Spencers offer home delivery for groceries. In fact, in London, Sainsbury's offer one hour delivery to compete with Amazon Prime. Now, home deliveries is a massive business. Last year, 90 million orders were placed for online home deliveries. In fact, it's set to grow from £8 billion a year to £19 billion a year. And when they surveyed UK shoppers, 90% of them said, hey, you know what? We prefer home deliveries. 90%. And that makes complete sense. You're sitting at home watching TV, you just tap the items you need, and an hour later your shopping turns up. So home deliveries is massive, and it's growing. But wait, there's a problem. It costs between 25 and 30 pounds per delivery, when you account for overheads, picking, fuel, leasing, and driver. In fact, the supermarkets are making a loss between five and seven pounds per order. They're losing money. When McKinsey were asked to analyze the cost of delivery, what they saw was that half of it, 50%, was in the very last bit, the last leg, the last mile from store to shopper. And now what that's created, is created this massive hole. The supermarkets just hemorrhaging money. In fact, it's created a 500 million pound dent in the profits of the big four. So they're losing money. So why are they doing it? It makes no sense, right? It's like selling tenors for fivers. It's insane. You see, these guys have got no choice. Because what they've seen is that if they don't go online, their store business suffers, where those big spenders are lured away by online competitors. And if you think about it, that's no different to our industry. Those traditional cash and carries, well, poor guys, many of them aren't growing very much. And the reason for that is those big spenders, they're lured away by online competitors, like JJ Foods, Breaks, Booker, or the Symbol Groups. And that makes sense, right? It's easier. If you're ordering 600 items a week, well, you're not going to go to the cash and carry, lift everything and anything. You're not going to spend hours on the telesales operator trying to tell them those 600 items and for them to only get it wrong. No, you're going to go where it's easier and quicker and allow you to do more things. Now, the supermarkets, they must be going online for home deliveries for another reason. They can't be all doing it to lose money, can they? They're doing it for another reason, probably the biggest reason because they know what's coming next. Robots? Really? I, know, I think I can hear you all thinking, really? What is this kid on about? It's 2017, not 2057. But let's take a look at what's happening today. This month, Tesco rolled out their autonomous delivery network, introducing the Starship robot. This is the same thing that Just Eat used in London to deliver takeaways. You load up your shopping in the grocery store, and off it goes. It's completely autonomous, with zero emissions. It makes its way to your shopper's home, where they're sent a pin code on their phone, which they enter in to unlock the lid and take out their shopping. This exists. Now, what this has done is reduced the cost of home deliveries down to just seven pounds. It's zero emissions, doesn't need a driver, and it's autonomous. At seven pounds, all of a sudden, Tesco's is making money. Acardo are going to test and roll out their autonomous delivery network later this year. But let's take a look at their warehouse in Andover. There's 8,000 of these bots working 24 hours a day, picking and fulfilling their orders. They don't ask for breaks, they don't ask for sick leave, and they don't ask you for a holiday. Hugely efficient. Now let's compare that to many of our traditional wholesalers where many of us still expect our customers to turn up and pull these heavy trolleys with wheels falling off. If you compare that to this, it makes us look hugely inefficient. So let's take a look at what else is happening, taking a peek around the corner. We've all heard of Uber, right? Well, Uber last year delivered 50,000 Budweiser bottles 500 miles away. So, what's so amazing about that? Well, take a look at this. They deliver these 50,000 Budweiser bottles 500 miles away in this a driverless lorry. This vehicle actually exists. It drove 500 miles, accounted for other vehicles, traffic systems, and managed to not run anybody over. It exists. 
Daimler-Benz and Ford are investing billions in autonomous vehicles. This is another vehicle that exists. It makes its way to an area where it's manned with equipped with drones and delivery vehicles that come out and deliver the shopping straight to your shopper's doors. This really exists. Now, another company we've all heard of, Google. Well, they own a company called Boston Dynamics. And two years ago, they showed us this, the Atlas, a robot that is designed to work in a warehouse environment. I know what you're thinking. This guy's quite slow. But remember, this guy works 24 hours a day. He doesn't need a break. He doesn't ask you for sick leave or ask for a holiday. <laughs> now remember, <laughs> when you make one of these, you can quickly make a million of them. Now technology moves so fast. One year later, the same company now shows us this. The handle is faster. It's more agile. This thing can pick up 100 pound weights. It can even jump. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's terrifying. Right? <laughs> so why are they doing it? Intel have forecasted that the autonomous logistic business is going to be worth $7 trillion. Trillion. It's massive. And what these companies know, it doesn't matter what business you're in, if you're not making it or consuming it, what you're doing, in fact, is moving it. So home deliveries is huge. 90 million orders were placed last year for online grocery shopping. It's set to grow from £8 billion pounds a year to £19 billion pounds a year. 90% of UK shoppers prefer home delivery. An autonomous delivery drives down the cost to £7, making it profitable. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. That's great. What's the big four supermarkets got anything to do with wholesale? It's got nothing to do with wholesale. Now, guys, that is the exact point. It's got nothing to do with wholesale. They're not including you in this vision. What they are doing, in fact, is cutting the wholesale industry out of the equation. What this is is total retail where a few companies own all the distribution channels from maker to consumer. Now, the brands here might be thinking, actually, you know what, that sounds quite sweet. We only need to deal with a few companies, not this rowdy rabble that are in here today. But brands, we've seen this before. Take a look at publishing. The publishing industry today is on its knees. It's been decimated. When Amazon first turned up, the publishers were really excited. Amazon, come and sit down next to us. Guys, this is going to be great. We're going to make more money. But fast forward to 2017, now Amazon account for 65% of the distribution of their books. Brands, when one company accounts for 65% of the distribution of your products, do you think you can set the prices? No. We've seen this in publishing. Amazon told Hachette Publishing Group that this is the price we're going to pay for your books. When Hachette turned around and said, Look, Amazon, we can't do this, we won't be able to do it. What did Amazon do? They put their books up online, all right, but they took away the buy now button hitting them where it hurts. Instantly, overnight, they put a stop to 65% of the sale of their products. So brands, think about this. When you rely on a few companies to distribute your products, do you think you can set the prices? It's too late for publishers. They've taken a leap off the cliff, and there's no way back up, because those bookshops have now shut. The NAMs and the CAMs that are in here today, think about it. This is your jobs on the line. How many NAMs and CAMs will you need when you rely on a few people to distribute your products? Heck, is even a sales director role even tenable? So, what can we do about it? We've got to do something, right? How do we compete? When you start to think about how you're going to compete, we need to look at what we have. The wholesale industry are specialists. They have expertise. Importantly, we have the people that truly know and understand our customers. We have a great network. We've got depots dotted all around our country. <laughs> now, that might sound quite weak, a weak argument compared to what we've seen. But take a look at food service, the industry that we operate in. These guys are specialists. They pick produce like your grandmother would. They've got a fantastic network. They offer next day delivery by default. In fact, many of the guys we work with in London offer second deliveries, which is same day delivery. When a chef has a late booking, like a birthday party, he gets in touch with his supplier and asks for those essential ingredients. And the supplier delivers it to them within the next few hours. Incredible service. Now, guys, we have a chance to not only survive, but to prosper. 
But to do that, you need to be at the right place at the right time and be ready. The foundation for everything we've seen is electronic ordering. If you don't take your orders electronically, you've got no chance. Leverage the technology that's already out there that can catapult you to be at the right place, ready, at the right time. Because if you go out there and invest in your own technology, quickly you're going to get stuck. Because what we've seen is technology moves so fast, you won't be able to keep up. Take a look at your phone. You get an iOS update three times a year. Same with Android. That's six times a year that your app can break. Samsung and Apple offer multiple devices every year, multiplying the number of times that your app can break. Leverage the expertise of the technology providers like us that are out there to catapult you to be at the right place at the right time. Importantly, taking an electronic ordering, because that will give you the ability to make more money, to be efficient, and make less mistakes. So, what's GoCart? GoCart is one of those companies that can take you to where you need to be. At GoCart, we believe that independent businesses should prosper, and this prosperity has its foundations in a strong and efficient supply chain. We're replacing three million answer phone orders placed every single week to food supplies from chefs. We take food supplies from answer phone to smartphone in 24 hours on our app for any food supplier to receive orders from their chefs. So what's that like? Now think back to that horrendous and appallingly difficult voicemail order we heard at the beginning. The chef now opens up go-kart. He sees his meat supplier, the fruit and veg guy, and his fish supplier. He opens up the supplier that he wants to place an order with, quickly taps the items he needs, and off it goes. Painless, right? So what's that like for the supplier? Again, imagine back and remember back to that story I told you at the beginning. The supplier goes in at 4 o'clock in the morning. He's faced with 100 answer phone orders that he's trying to decipher. Now instead, he gets a clean, precise, digital email of that order, knowing who it's from. And if you want to go a step further, we can take those orders and insert them into your accounts package. So instead of coming in at 4 o'clock in the morning, going through 100 answer phone messages, frantically trying to listen to them, instead, now you go in, and these orders are already there, ready to be picked, delivered, and importantly, error-free. So guys, change is being delivered all around us. And we've got two very simple choices. We either do nothing, and like the publishers, watch our customers deteriorate and then us deteriorate, or two, we look at technology and embrace it and grow with it, utilizing people like us that can take you to where you need to be at the right time, to make more money, to be more efficient, and make less mistakes. Now, brands, when you go out there and speak to wholesalers, go out and talk to them and tell them what you've seen is coming, and tell them they've got a chance to prosper, to make more money, be more efficient, and make less mistakes. Now, finally, we're here for the next two days. We've all got bright blue T-shirts on. Come and meet us. We'd love to listen to you and hear your thoughts and uh, have a conversation. Thanks.